This is the Proton Guru video practice for topic 3.8. These problems will give you practice on cyclopropanation and epoxidation reaction of alkenes, as well as a review of other alkene reacts we've learned so far. Some really brief and straightforward reading to get you ready for these kinds of problems can be found in the Organic Chemistry 1 Primer 2018 in Lesson 3.8. You can also find additional chemistry videos and information how to match those videos up to your particular course's textbook at protonguru.com. Here we have three reactions, and we're simply asked to provide the major products of the reaction shown. Well, all of these conditions, if you take a look at them, MCPBA, this species or this species, these are all different representations of peroxy acids, and they're all ways to do epoxidation reactions. The epoxidation reaction itself is a concerted reaction, so there's no time for the direction of any groups to change around during the course of the reaction. If these are pointed opposite directions in the starting material, they'll point opposite directions in the product. And what that means is all we have to do is make the ring and check for stereochemistry, the epoxide ring simply being a three-membered ring with an oxygen. So for this first one, we have a transalkene. So these ethyl groups here are the same as these ethyl groups here. They started out trans in the alkene. They're going to give us a trans epoxide. So finally we check for stereochemistry. Well, we have an achiral starting material and we generated stereocenters here, so we need to have racemic product. Now remember, in a couple lessons ago, we talked about meso compounds. If you have two stereocenters and they both have the same different substituents, like in this case, you have to check for symmetry. If they're symmetric, they're meso compounds. But here, we don't have symmetry because these are pointed in different directions. So we have two different enantiomers in equal amounts. That's the definition of a racemic mixture. So we move on to the next problem. We're going to sort of in our scratch paper say, oh, we're going to make a epoxide like this. I've got to look at for this because if I do that I'll get a stereocenter. So maybe I just draw one of these. I say I'm going to choose to draw this one first with the ethyl group pointed forward. I just talked about the fact that I have a chiral center. So I have to also have an equal amount of this because my starting material is a chiral. I get a racemic mixture. Now we have this cisalkene. We're going to use a peroxy acid again. We should get this compound got to check for stereochemistry. Well, we generated two chiral centers, but in this case, unlike the top, this is symmetric because these two both point the same way. The definition of a meso compound is a compound that has stereocenters but also is symmetric. So this is a meso compound, which is achiral. Now we have the same three starting materials, but I have changed up the conditions here. Well, these three conditions are all ways to do cyclopropanation. So we're going to take the alkenes and make cyclopropane rings here. That, like the epoxidation, is a concerted step. So we're going to make the ring and check for stereochemistry. Otherwise, this is identical to our problems on epoxides. If we look back at our epoxide answers, anywhere where we had an O in the ring, we're going to have a carbon in the ring when we do cyclopropanation instead. The only extra wrinkle is that there are three different ways to make the cyclopropane ring, and you'll want to check with your textbook and your instructor. Not every course teaches them all in a given course, but these two conditions provide the CH. Right? You have a CH here and a CH here. Those are going to be CH2s when you go and make the cyclopropane ring. This different one is where you have potassium t-butoxide with chloroform. It adds a CCl2, so instead of two H's, you've got two chlorines because you have chlorines on this carbon here. So all I've done differently from the epoxide questions is putting the CH2 in place of the oxygen here. We have a racemic mixture of these. These are still chiral compounds, even though there's no oxygen there. Now, if I had an O here, like in the epoxide question, then this side of the ring and this side of the ring are different. But when it's a CH2, CH2 and CH2 are the same as each other. This is now an achiral compound. So that's a difference in the stereochemical outcome. And then we get a meso compound here, which is achiral as well. Now, one of the big challenges in organic chemistry is you're learning all these different reactions. You're going to have to figure out how to solve these types of problems. And if we're given a list like this, it might help to figure out what type of reaction each one is. A really, really good practice is to pause the video and see if you can recognize each of these steps and just sort of sketch down what each of these steps will accomplish in terms of what it adds to the alkene. If you've gone through and filled that out, look at reaction condition A. Let's start there at the top of this reaction wheel and say, well, I know when I see these two with an alkene, it's going to add a CCL2 unit to make a cyclopropane. So I do that. 
And when you do that, you can kind of see you're going to generate a stereo center. So you draw a squiggly line to indicate you're going to have a racemic mix. Moving on to conditions B. If we have an alkene addition reaction with a halogen, we know it's going to be anti-addition. And if we have another nucleophile in addition to the halogen, we add one of the halogens and one of the nucleophiles, and they add Markovnikov. So if you're sketching this down in your scratch paper, you say Markovnikov means I get the OH on the more substituted side and the BR on the less substituted side. That's going to generate a stereocenter here, so I should get a racemic mixture of that product. Moving on to reaction condition C, this is the Simmons-Smith reaction, one of the ways to make cyclopropane rings by adding a CH2. You could say, well, I'm going to get this, add a CH2 up here. This is just like one we did on a previous page. You'll have no chirality because this side of the ring and this side of the ring will be the same once you add that substituent. So you have an achiral material. Moving on to reaction conditions D, you have a strong acid. You're going to add an H and get a carbocation. So you say, well, Scribble this out in my scratch paper and say I'm going to make the more stable carbocation, not the one over here. And then I check to see if it rearranges. It's not going to rearrange to this site. That's primary. This is tertiary, though. So I'm going to take one of the hydrogens off here and move it over there. So now you can scribble that out in your scratch paper and say, well, the cation in the end is going to be here. That's where the BR is going to coordinate. So if I look at my product for step D, which is this one, I'm going to add the bromine here because of the rearrangement of the skeleton from the carbocation. Now I'm on to step E. I see the halogen. I immediately think anti-addition. This second thing is not a good nucleophile. That makes it different from what we saw with B. With B, we add an OH and a BR. But we're on reaction E. We just add a BR and a BR. Nothing can rearrange. So you would, on your scratch paper, maybe scribble out the double bond, put the two bromines on. Say, well, I've generated a chiral center there. So I should get a racemic mixture at that chiral center, half R, half S. Now reaction F, this step, as soon as I see that mercury, I think, okay, Markovnikov addition of an H and OH, nothing can rearrange. OH on the more substituted, I've already got two H's there, I simply add a third. I've made a chiral center there. I should get a racemic mixture of 50% R and 50% S configuration there. I look at step G, I see CO3H. The peroxy acid happens to have a phenyl group on it. Whenever you see that, you think of making an epoxide. If I'm working on some scratch paper, scribble that out and say that's going to happen. And that generates a chiral center here. So, gets us to this product, racemic mixture, 50% R, 50% S at that stereocenter. If we look at step H now, well, I have a strong acid. As soon as I see the strong acid, I'm going to get the H added to make a carbocation. You say, okay, I'm going to add the H to the less substituted side, make the carbocation on the more substituted side of the double bond. But, oh, this is tertiary, just like I saw when I did the reaction in step D over here. So the carbocation I'm going to get after I rearrange it is the tertiary one. Then the OH from the water adds to that side. So I should have a product that looks like this with the OH here. And that's a chiral. There aren't any chiral centers there. Finally, step I. This is one of the ways that one can make a cyclopropane by transferring the CH2 there. So I get this product, and you don't have to use this squiggly line. This squiggly line says it could point forward or backwards, which is certainly true. Just remember that both of these are a chiral, in case you're being asked any type of question where you've got to indicate that. And now we've finished out all nine of these reactions. So here's one of these reaction strings. We're asked to fill in the major product for each step, and we're specifically asked to fill in cis, trans, E, Z, R, and S labels for any products we need, and to indicate when we have a racemic mixture, when we might get meso compounds. So let's carefully think this through one step at a time. This first step has metachloroperoxybenzoic acid. That's an epoxidation. If we're thinking about this, just scribbling out in our scratch paper, we say we're going to make that and that'll make a stereocenter there. So we have to have a racemic mixture of R and S. And I've gone ahead and filled in the labels. You want to check and confirm that you can figure that out as well. And the instructions tell us to use the S isomer, so this one for the next step. What kind of reaction is that next step? Well, the epoxide reaction we know is ring open. We don't know any other epoxide reactions. So we have to identify our nucleophile plus minus. We have an H minus nucleophile. So here we say, Attack the less substituted side of the nucleophile as usual and do that. So if we're thinking over here, we say, oh, we didn't attack the side with the ethyl group. So the O is over here and the H I just attacked with is right here. 
The second step of the ring opening is to just put a hydrogen proton on that oxygen. And of course, we're asked to label this R or S. That's the R isomer. Next, we have the alcohol reacting with sulfuric acid. That is an E1 reaction we learned a while back from reactions of alcohols. And that's going to produce the alkene. If we draw this out and forget about the stereochemistry for a second, the alkene E1 reaction could make it on one of those two spots. You want to go to the more substituted side. And the problem asks us to label this. You can label this trans or E. They're both correct labels for that. And the very last reaction we're asked about is just with bromine. Alkene with bromine, you see bromine, you think anti. And we only have bromine, so we add a bromine to each side. We've generated two stereocenters. And if you look back at the practice video we posted for lesson 3.6, there's an example just like this, but adding chlorine. And if you figure it out, you'll see this is a meso compound.